Peter Hitchener is one of Australia's most loved and respected TV newsreaders. He's also 71 years old and quite a big thing on Snapchat. In fact, he's a self-confessed social media addict, and for good reason, as he's using it to effectively grow both his personal and employers' brands. Join Peter and I as he takes us behind the scenes of how he's doing it. Hey, before we immerse ourselves in episode 378 of the Small Business Big Marketing Show, and it is a very good one, let me tell you, the marketing gold is made possible thanks to Open Universities Australia and 52ways.biz. Now, when was the last time you learned something that could propel your business forward? Now, outside of listening to this show, and thank you for that, your answer may well be, not in a very long time, Timbo. That's cool. Maybe it's time that changed, though. Check out Open University's online courses over at open.edu.au. Someone's got to be the smartest in your industry. May as well be you. And we're also made possible thanks to Dale Beaumont's 52 Ways live event that's touring Australia and New Zealand this month. Plus, there's been a swag of new dates for 2018 that have just been released. In one very full day, Dale hands you on a platter 52 ways to grow your business. And you can grab free tickets for you and a mate or mates right now over at 52, that's 52ways.biz. Yeah, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show Where successful small business owners share their souls To take your marketing straight to the lead Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie And welcome back to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show That would be the small business big marketing show I'm your host, Tim Bo Reed, but you... Infinitely more importantly, you're a motivated business owner and you're ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. If it's your first time round, welcome. Strap in for a wonderful marketing ride. If it's your 300th, 378th time around, welcome back. And uh, thanks for putting your trust in me to guide that beautiful business of yours. Hey, big show today. Australia's most popular TV newsreader, Channel 9's Peter Hitchener, explains how he's using social media so effectively. Resident expert Dale Beaumont from 52 Ways shares a brilliant way to create quick mock-ups. I share another low-cost marketing idea involving a not-so-fun side of business. And we go digging through the back catalogue of this show to find an episode from a long time ago that I still love listening to. And I don't listen to all my episodes, but this one I do go back to. As per usual, team, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Quick update on a couple of things that you may or may not know about. Now, this show is the also the business show on all domestic and international Virgin Australia flights, X Australia. So if you've listened to me in flight, then I'd love you to tell Virgin. Give them a tweet, hit them up on Facebook, at Virgin Australia. Let them know you heard me and the Small Business Big Marketing Show, 35,000 feet in the air. That would be cool. Uh, And did you also know that for the past seven weeks, I've been hosting a 30-minute program with Steve Price on 58 radio stations around Australia. It's called Be That Business, and we focus on how to grow your business using technology. So if you're in Australia, then feel free to give me a call from 9 p.m. each Wednesday night on 131873. Love to talk to you. Tell them, you know, say, hey, I'm a listener of your podcast, Timbo, and maybe you've got a question around technology for your business. All right, what shall we do next? How about we get a little productive? Ah, 
Life just got a whole lot easier. Hi, it's Dale Beaumont here from 52ways.biz, the best one-day business workshop ever with another productivity tool to make your business life a whole lot easier. So what is the tool that I've got for you today? Well, it's called Placeit, and you can check it out by going to the website placeit.net. Now, on this website, you'll find literally thousands of professional quality images. However, these images are a little bit different because they've been processed in such a way that there's a section of these images where you can take your logo or take a book cover or take a screenshot of your computer or your iPhone and you can place it within a professional quality image. Go ahead and try it for yourself. It's amazing what it can do. Go to placeit.net. Now, these images can then be purchased for a couple of dollars and then you can take these images and put them onto your website. You can use them in social media. You can even download print quality versions as well that you can use in some of your physical marketing collateral. So go ahead and check it out today. Go to placeit.net and you can find out more about this awesome tool. There you go. I told you life would get a whole lot easier. This has been Dale Beaumont from 52ways.biz. Now, back to you, Timbo. Ah, life just got a whole lot easier. See, I told you life would get a whole lot easier. Thanks, Dale. Hey, if you're loving the productivity tools Dale is sharing, then you're going to love his upcoming live events. Here's a note I received from longtime listener and wedding MC Nick Logan. He says, I'm just back from Dale's 52 Ways event. Talking to a few randoms before the door opened, everyone seemed to be prepared for a sales pitch of some sort. And fair enough, this is a free event after all. Now, as a guy that works in front of crowds every weekend, I was loving his stage presence and the way he holds the room. I learnt a lot from the things that weren't part of the actual program. Good point, Nick. Uh, Dale is a a gun presenter and he does hold the room well and that's not easy over eight hours and he does it amazingly. So sometimes we can learn from just watching what's going on and not just from the content. Nick goes on to say, was it a sales pitch? Yes. Was it worth going to? Yes. Did I learn anything? Absolutely yes. Yes. Good on him, hey? Regular podcast listeners will be aware of much of what Dale presents, but also uh, Dale shows real-life working examples of many of the productivity tools he shares. Thanks for bringing it to my attention, Timbo. My pleasure, Nick. To everyone else, it really is eight hours of solid business building gold. There's new dates announced for 2018, so now you've got no excuse for not attending, head over to 52ways.biz, grab some free tickets for you and some colleagues and have a day out where you learn new stuff. Coming up after today's interview, I'll share another low-cost marketing idea that will help you grow your business thanks to your unhappy customers. And come on, own up. We've all got a few of them out there somewhere. Unfortunately... But right now, let's meet today's inspiring guest who's going to lift the lid on how you can use social media to effectively build your personal and business brands. Oh, I love that music. Been around for years. It's the intro to the Channel 9 News. Now, speaking of the Channel 9 News, Peter Hitchener is one of Australia's most loved and respected TV newsreaders. Think a chivalrous version of Ron Burgundy from Anchorman. I love that film. One of my favourites. Peter's spent his entire career in the media and has been the chief newsreader for Channel 9 since 1998. He received the Order of Australia Medal earlier this year for his services to the broadcast media and the community, and he is an active supporter of a number of charities. Now, I know what you're thinking. Pete's not a business owner, Timbo, and you always interview business owners. (laughs) Well, you're right, but that doesn't mean we can't learn from him. What fascinates me about Peter Hitchener is that he's 71 years old and he's not only using social media effectively, he is using all social media channels effectively. How I found this out was via my 17-year-old daughter, who was having a laugh at the dinner table a few weeks ago about the fact that Peter Hitchener is massive on Snapchat and all her girlfriends 
absolutely love him. She showed me what he was doing, and I thought it was pure genius, and it really took me by surprise. At that minute, I had to interview him. So if you're keen to up your presence and engagement on social media, then listen in as Australia's most popular TV newsreader takes us behind the scenes of his love affair with social media. I started off by asking Peter, what's his superpower? My superpower? I don't have a superpower. I wish I did. Oh, However, I've got a, a super interest in social media, so you that's do. something that uh, you do. that I find uh, a lot of people are daunted by it, but I, I found immediately that it, it was wonderful. It just made sense. And I know that there are pitfalls and there are problems for some on social media, and we can all uh, accidentally put a foot wrong every now and again. However, I've found it a thoroughly enjoyable uh, journey. Oh, no, that horrible word again. <laughs> I've found it a thoroughly enjoyable experience getting good at uh, or getting an idea of about how social media works. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to say your superpower is being incredibly engaging, and I want to talk about that later. Oh, but thank you. Uh, my, oh, my thank you. I'd be, my... I'd be delighted if that were true. <laughs> I'm not sure that it is, but thanks. Let's go back a step pre-social media days. Yes. How were you promoting yourself and the Nine News brand before social media came along? Well, you see, it it was a different world back then. Uh, In fact, even before joining Nine, I started off at 4BH in Brisbane. That was my first job, reading the news uh, on the half hour in breakfast or drive. Not long out of school, didn't have a clue what was going on, but it was a terrific learning experience. It was a fantastic station and a great newsroom. And so I was learning about, um, about stories, about how you get stories, about how you interview politicians or whoever the newsmakers are. So I was building up a knowledge about about the job. But as far as promoting our station, um, well, it just didn't happen. I mean, mm-hmm. that was something that the promotions department of the station did and they took media ads, they took ads in the newspapers. Um, I don't think radio in those days was advertising on television, although it has since done. Uh, then at the ABC, which I joined after 4BH, Again, it was something that was done by the promotions or publicity department, and they had their job. And it was and expensive. The rest of us, oh, it must have been a fortune, cost a fortune for yeah. them, because uh, because media ads in those days uh, for newspapers and magazines were hugely expensive. I'm sure the prices come down now. Maybe, but maybe. Back, but back then, it was just it was very expensive, and those were about the only ways of promoting your product, except. Uh, on you know for the ABC they could promote their products on television because they had those little kind of commercial breaks at the end of the show at the end of each show uh, but um, and in fact probably for Channel Nine it was similar now there've always been great marketing initiatives along the way uh, there was um, I, I remember when I first joined Channel Nine there was the, there was a, a, a sort of a Channel Nine dance that you did. Uh, they played this little music and, and everybody from Humphrey Bear through to the newsreaders did this little dance on the station IDs. I remember that. Do you remember? Yeah, I do. Yes. It was quite fun. It was good fun, actually. I did it and trod on <laughs> my, host, my co-host's feet. toe, <laughs> but she didn't seem to mind. But the thing is, uh, th- so there were ways of marketing the station sure. in those days, but as far as somebody who was on air, it was not not really something that I was involved in because uh, that was done by experts and and we just did our job. So things changed. There was a point in time and can you recall that moment where you have gone, oh, hang on, there's this thing called social media and all of a sudden (laughs) you can use it to actively, you know, I say promote yourself. I know you're not a self-promoter but you actively can take people behind the scenes. You can... Yes. You remember that moment? I can remember that moment actually, yes. It was when I opened a Twitter account uh, and I have Tony Jones, my colleague at Nine News in Melbourne, and Clint Stanaway to thank for this because they said, look, what are you doing? Because I knew about it. But I kept thinking, oh, look, it's going to take up so much of my time. I'll let somebody else do it. And then, I, and then when I opened the account and suddenly realised, wait, I've suddenly got access to and the ability to communicate with whoever happens to be interested, I thought, this is amazing. And... Mm. And uh, and I, I I thought I'd make up my own rules for what I did. So I tried to um, anyone who followed me, I'd follow them back, and if they sent me a direct message, I'd try to respond. Uh, I'm a bit slower on those things <laughs> now. It's certainly the response to private messages because there actually are quite a few of them. But I I tried to just do it as something that was a. a 
an honest um, extension of what I would normally do. So How long ago was this, Peter, when you when you picked up Look, Twitter? Look, it's years and years ago Yeah, it is, because yeah, Twitter's been around for well, a long time. So you're yes. early adopter. Early adopter, and... Uh, I, I, I looked at some old tweets the other day and I thought, oh, they're from years ago. <laughs> so, you know, the, yeah, yeah. It, it has been a long time. So it was Twitter first and then Instagram, um, uh, which which I sort of adopted or which I went on as soon as, as soon as everyone was saying, hey, wait a minute, let's check out Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought, oh, this is good because you get to talk about, you get to share a different side of what you're doing. Um, and put the pics more up visual. and things. More visual, yes, and not necessarily... Because Twitter was, at that stage, uh, very much news-driven. So if there was something new happening, you'd mention, oh, there's a headline coming up in the news at six, we've got this exclusive, or whatever it mm-hmm. was. Um, but Instagram gave you that, that pictorial coverage without necessarily it being relevant to a news story of the day. And I, I found since then that I also do that on Twitter now. So I just put up pics on Twitter that... You know, just a you know, a nice sunrise or something like that, just to you know, mm-hmm. connect with, with whoever's interested. It would have been what very easy for someone in your position with a public profile to go, you know what, this is way too revealing. You know, <laughs> all the magic disappears of celebrity, oh, and then you go, what well, magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you don't think it's magic, but uh, uh, people do. And did you not have that conversation with yourself? You just want um, you were quite excited by the fact that all of a sudden, because yes. what you do is a one way street to camera. There's yes, no feedback. That's right. that's right. Well, that's the thing, because television used to be, and all broadcasting was pretty much delivered from on high with no right of reply, really, Correct. to the people. They could they could uh, write a letter to the editor or something of a newspaper, and that was a way of getting their story out. But social media makes it immediate, and it uh, and it has enormous potential to reach lots of people. So if people, a lot of people are feeling one way about a story, well, they have access to a platform. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I actually think it's terrific. And... And, um, well, you know, in this day and age, everybody knows everything about everybody if they can be bothered finding <laughs> yeah, yeah. out. So so the, any any idea of magic or that sort of stuff, you know, okay. revealing the magic d- doesn't count, I think, because we you. sort of all know who we are and we all, you know, everyone knows. I think everyone sort of knows if you're coming with... With the right intentions mm-hmm. or not, if you if you come to to Twitter or Insta or Snapchat or whatever it is with the right intentions, I think people see that people, are, you know, Smart. the audience is highly intelligent. They are certainly much more intelligent than I am, uh, and so you know, you just throw yourselves at their mercy and hope for the best. You picked up Twitter early days. You then went on to Insta. Insta, yes. You are, keep uh, going. And I'm still on Twitter and Insta, by you the are. way. Um, Facebook. I was I was a bit late to Facebook actually because I I thought. Facebook is something that has got sort of different time constraints to it. It's it's sort of more, um, it's not quite as immediate as the other two seem to be. And it, I mean, it's immediate, but it's it uh, it's just a different kind of conversation. And it, that took a while to get to get into. But I've discovered, or oh, actually, this is very, it's a great way of chatting to to people mm-hmm. who might be in the audience who might not. But it's a nice way of. Um, Connecting and uh, then Snapchat and Snapchat is one that I love. Oh, before Snapchat, of course, there was Periscope. Periscope <laughs> came along, so I do a Periscope every day. Uh, and Periscope is is kind of a of a live live stream linked to Twitter. So uh, you, you yes. know, you sort of um, owned by Twitter. Owned and, by Twitter. And, uh, yes. Uh, I, I love that. I, you, I, I see a lot of news readers over in the states use it. In fact, that's where yes. I first. Um, I think yeah. very exciting. I mean, there's some news readers who literally have they their have phone it on the on their phone while they're doing yeah doing the thing, and well, uh, it's quite exciting. I, I do that with our news breaks sometimes, just to let people know what's coming. Not during the news itself, but. Um, um, mainly for, for logistical reasons, because there's nowhere to, to hide the phone. We've got this vast <laughs> space age looking desk. <laughs> you want to put a phone on that? Oh, good luck! <laughs> not, not a hope. So I, I, I can't do it there. But but I do it for the for you know news breaks and things. Taking people love to see behind the scenes. I think, and I think it's interesting too. I know you do, and I, I've always loved behind the scenes. It's yeah. one of the con- things on in terms of social media content that people love, and a lot of mm. business owners undervalue the idea of taking people behind the scenes yes. of their business. And I, I love your excitement for the business still. I, I was watching a behind the scenes of yours only yesterday where... Oh, thank you. Well, thank you, you for do. your support. You, <laughs> I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. That's the thing. That's the other thing to remember. Yeah. Um, where a lot of people seem to think, oh, you'd never, you know, you never respond to people and things. But of course you do. And you always... 
I, I, I'm always appreciative of anybody who, if they can be bothered following me, I can certainly be, be bothered following them or being in touch with them or something because, you know, it's a two-way street. But, uh, but as you were saying, behind the scenes is exciting, isn't oh, it? Oh, I think fun? it is. I think it is. And the minute you lose that, the minute I think there's a spark's gone because it yeah. is fun. And um, what you do is yes. fun. And that is the magic, by the way. So there is magic attached to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. you're, you're just revealing your tricks, <laughs> well, right? Well, no, actually, the magic is probably the people who are in the team. No doubt. Oh, they're terrific. And the, getting them to tell their story, it's so much fun. And, and you know, because I, I have the pleasure of working with the people in makeup and styling and, and the floor managers and, <laughs> and camera operators and the reporters and producers and everyone every day but people at home don't get to meet them and they are such great talent and yep. great stories in themselves uh, that whenever I have the opportunity I like to show them the other thing I love is I've always loved a, a studio or a theater when it's before the performance oh, yes. or after the performance oh, there's yes. a magic there that that is just worth oh, just a nice sharing with people so yep. it's you know sometimes just go into the studio and just show them show anyone who's watching what the studio looks like without the lights for instance yep. so you know and it's just it just shares that, that how do you maintain that uh, because when, when I saw your behind the scenes yesterday and you interviewed the makeup girl you interviewed oh, the yes. floor manager you interviewed <laughs> you're speaking to the cameraman now yes. You've been doing this for 40 years, although yes. albeit not on TV, but yeah. you have been doing the oh, news yes, been, for yes. a, a long I've, time. I've worked in television, you know, or, or radio <laughs> since I left school. Wow. Which is 100 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> 10 years ago. But um, you – so what I watched yesterday with that behind-the-scenes footage on Periscope was like – but you must have done that a hundred times before. How do you maintain the excitement around well, that? Well, there's always a different angle. So yesterday, that was uh, yes, that was done the day before yesterday. Yeah. But it was done recently because I think periscopes stay up about uh, 24 hours and then they're gone. I'm not exactly right. sure what the what the time span is. But um, so I hadn't spoken to those. Uh, that talent before on air, but I've spoken to Jane a couple of times. Jane is our prompter. Uh, she she operates the the prompting side of things. She is critical to you. She is critical to me, <laughs> and she's a good friend because we've been, we've worked together for thirty something years, and she's just so funny and so fabulous, and she's a good friend of mine. And so we've occasionally done periscopes together, but always about different things. So the other day when she had a puppy and it was doing what puppies do, which is wander around the house chewing jocks or socks, uh, that's what a puppy does. So we had a laugh about it and yeah. had a chat about that on Periscope and Facebook Live, which is also uh, which is also around now. So that so those are two good ways of live streaming. They are. Uh, and we're, we're live streaming there. Oh, good work. Hey. Hello there. Hello there. Greetings. Good to talk to you. How do you... Um, where do the ideas come from? So, like, you're sitting in makeup, uh, you're thinking, uh, I think I'm going to do a Facebook Live as yes. I wander into the studio, or where, where does that come I from? Just, I don't know. I just I just am engaged with the process. So, Is it every day? So every day. Oh, yes. Every day <laughs> I think what, what I should be doing. In fact, had I been more confident about today's, <laughs> to, about our interview today, I'd have actually live-streamed it myself. Right. But I thought... Um, Oh, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do here. Yeah, so yeah, I might yeah, just. Okay. Uh, I might Fair just, enough. But Fair I'm enough. pleased that you're you're putting it up live. That's terrific. So, and by the way, I should have asked permission for that, but it's oh, going on the podcast really anyway. And, um, do you think I need permission? <laughs> did you say? I need did you say chillax? I think I might have actually. I yes. love that. <laughs> oh yes, it gives a fit. Oh, it gives give a me one of those. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I noticed you did the dab the other oh, day. Yeah, have to, oh yes, the dab. I mean, and that's the other thing about social crazes. I was just thinking about that the other day. How quickly they come and go. How quickly they're forgotten. Remember the mannequin challenge? I do. That's so planking. last century. And planking and all those other things. Yep. They're in for a minute and gone. That's our that's our kind of disposable Correct. <laughs> life Correct. we live in these days. So, so a dab is probably so last century that you can't even my imagine. My kids still but ask me to do the dab. I think I they're, I think they're oh, taking still the mickey. Right. But, um, <laughs> yes. Well, this is interesting because that's how I found out about your Snapchat involvement. My daughter oh. Stephanie, who you spoke to the other day yes. so very kindly and made her day, maybe week, possibly. Possibly month oh, or year, I don't know. Down. But but um, she said, Dad, Peter Hitchener, the, the newsreader guy, he's on Snapchat. Mm. And I love that because Snapchat is generally, I, I think, the demographic is very younger. young. Yeah, it skews so, younger. So but... uh, you've been quite strategic, uh, although, you know, I'm sure you don't sit there with a whiteboard and plan it, no. but you are opening yourself up to a much younger demographic well, yes. who, who probably don't watch a lot of TV, by no. the way. No, they're not. I don't think that they're... Uh, you know, I think look, lifestyles have changed, and especially uh, young, you know, younger, the younger audience isn't there so much anymore. Although, although there are plenty of 
people under 25 who watch who watch the news but no uh, doubt. but it wasn't so much uh, it wasn't even thought about as a strategy i just thought oh this is a great app how does it work and so it was because of the app and because of the and and really you have no idea actually how old the people are who are who are also on the app mm-hmm. uh, except that it clearly does skew younger but um you know why not and and you get a response from from uh, i mean it's it's amazing the, the the response to a picture or to a you know to a snap is is in the thousands within minutes mm. Where it's, you don't necessarily get that response on Twitter or or Instagram, uh, and I'm not I'm not decrying those apps because mm. they're terrific, but um, uh, it just oh, it always amazes me how many how many people are on Snapchat, and how and what kind of response you get to things. I put up a, a picture on uh, Sunday morning that was um, just to a, a specific part of the audience. Uh, and uh, just put up a thing saying good morning, have a great have a great weekend, and it it had nearly nine thousand looks within the twenty four hours, and uh, more than one hundred and fifty screenshots. So wow! So you know that's that's just a way of, of how, how do you decide? I don't, I, don't know that it, I don't know that it goes anywhere or that it, but it's it's just it just shows that it's it's. Mm-hmm. It's called engagement. Know. It's engagement, And people yes. consume information differently. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. So uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I love it. I, I love it. How yeah. do you decide whether to Snapchat, Insta, Facebook, Twitter? <laughs> Tell me you're not on well, LinkedIn and Google Plus and uh, no, no, Pinterest. I'm, and uh, No. Uh, well, I'm, I have a Pinterest account, but I... I don't understand Pinterest, right. so I just think, well, it's it's lovely, good, good, have fun. Tick. It's over there. I don't know how to do it. Okay, no, no. I don't have time. And and how I do don't... you decide which oh, one? Oh, well, I use? just I just I tend to take a photo on Snap, and uh, then resize it if I need to, or just <laughs> edit it and put it on the others uh, if it's appropriate. Uh, not always, not always on Twitter, yep. um, because it might not, you know, not might not really yeah, work yeah. on Twitter. It might be a bit too so folksy it, for that. If you had have streamed our conversation today, you would have had the choice of Periscope and Facebook I'd, Live. I'd, would really, you? I'd really wanted to do both, and that's the, that is the trouble ah. because because I, yeah, I think you think you get a different audience for both, uh, and um, you can put up video afterwards on Facey Live, uh, Facebook Live, uh, but Periscope is live, live, and that's it. Uh, and so I might have recorded it, uh, done a periscope, recorded it, and then posted it later on Facebook. Right. Mm. So that's. Oh, yes. I love it. Yes. So do I actually. And uh, and again, I I've no idea whether this is a way of. Uh, I mean, it's a way of engaging with people. I don't know how you monetize it, and I don't know whether you want to. I don't. I don't really want to. I just, well, I just like people to know what we're doing and yes. share my my passion for what sure. our job is and and to share the newsroom and to share the people I work with. Oh, our team is amazing, and I'm forever hounding them. Uh, TJ, for instance, Tony Jones, he's he does the sport and he fills in when I'm on holidays and things, and he's terrific. Tony is an amazing talent. He can do anything. He's a, a reporter who. Who has got whose writing skills are just amazing, mm-hmm. and who's very funny, and he's a great compare, and he knows about sport and news and and everything. He's a multi-talent, and I say to him, "Now come on, TJ, let's have a yarn uh, live." And he says, "No, mate, I'm too busy <laughs> <laughs> writing stories." Not interested. Well, he's interested, but but at that time of day, right. he can't really do it. So, but I'm I'm forever chatting to Lavinia or one of the reporters about what their story is or what they've been doing. So, you know, it's good fun. I've got three children. I'm constantly telling them, guys, just look three centimetres up. Just three (laughs) centimetres. There's a world out there. Yes. They are addicted and it's the the nature of that generation and Mm. we could have that discussion but we won't because um, it it gets me annoyed. (laughs) <laughs> Are you one of these people? If I spent a, you know, a week at Hitch's house, would yes. I be saying, Hitch, just three centimetres up if you could? I'm, yes. I'm over here. Well, <laughs> Are you addicted? Um, well, yes, I think I am. <laughs> I, to be honest, we, I think We've I, now got an interve- intervention happening. I, and... I, I, look, I think I am because um, on the occasion, on the odd occasion where your phone has a meltdown and says, I'm not going to work just now, and you've got to reboot it and things. And you think, oh, gosh, I hope this thing hasn't died because I've got so much stuff on there and I need to get get my posts up or things. <laughs> and uh, and quite often I'm at, sitting up at night um, just preparing sh- shout-out lists for, for oh, Snapchat wow. or things like that. So it does take up a lot of time. Tell me about that. Are you literally jotting down? Uh, well, I jot down. People seem to like having 
we see, we're all in. I think everyone wants to be acknowledged. I know if if someone acknowledges me, I just love it, <laughs> whether I deserve it or not. It's just lovely. And so on Snapchat. Uh, and on Insta as well, but really on Snapchat. Um, I just give shout out. Somebody said once, would you give me a shout out for my birthday? Probably wasn't even their birthday, but who cares? So mm-hmm. I gave them a, a shout out and <laughs> deluged with other requests. And uh, so I, I try and do it every couple of days. And it's only people who've, who've requested one. And there are hundreds of them. Hundreds. But so, you, so you can't do them all. You just make well, a list. I try and... to do them all. Wow. Yeah, so I try to do them all, but, you know, it takes a while. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I and don't it... know that I claim to do them all because they're just a lot. But, but you know, it's it's one of these days I'm going to have to think, wait a minute, <laughs> I, I, yeah, should, yeah, yeah, I yeah. should limit this a bit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So far I haven't well, reached that. You, could you put in uh, how many hours a day you're on social media, put a number to it? Oh, yes. It'll be... It's, it's okay, more than okay. two. Don't it's say it. More than two, but it could be three. <laughs> you said it by not saying anything. <laughs> Tell me, uh, do you have it next to your bed? Do you wake oh, the yes. first thing? Tell uh, me, you don't wake not... up in the morning and the first thing you do is check your your facey or your <laughs> well, snappy. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, Peter. No, the thing Peter. is, what I do in the morning is I do, I do. First of all, I do check the news website. So I read the news. I check Twitter and I check Instagram and I check Snapchat before getting out of bed. Um, sometimes. <laughs> I oh, love gosh. it. This is so... Oh, I love it. <laughs> this, this is a sad life this revealed is, Well, here, I, you're, you're in the majority. Well, yes, I am. But the good thing is I also do, um, you know, I find time to get to the gym three times a week and I play golf whenever I can and I go to work and I'm, you know, so I have have a kind of a busy life and I also do a podcast for you do. Uh, Behind the Wheel. I want to talk about that and I'm yes. conscious of time. Yeah. Um, what I love, another use the way you're using social media is you're giving shout outs to what I would call your customers, people who are going oh, to yes. watch the news. Yes, I suppose that. Um, and I think listeners, uh, business owners can learn from that. You also give shout outs to your, your personal uh, trainer. Yes. Your, you know, where you've gone and had a coffee somewhere yep. and so you're That's promoting right. other businesses and that can yes. only, I mean, if karma is a thing and I think it is. I hope so. I hope so. Then it can only come back, can't it? Well, I, I think so. And and I should also make it clear, I don't I don't take a sponsorship or anything like that. I don't get paid for any of this stuff. I just do it. I mean, you said, I, but you, I know some can monetize it. Would you uh, like to? Um, well, um, you know, I wonder about the people who, are, as you said, customers or you know people I've made contact with. Um, I'm not sure that I really want them to feel that they're being sold something. Mm. So. I, I mean, I just share with what's going on in my life, and and uh, you know, I, I a story. Here's a little story Here we about go. Specsavers. The other day, we had a meltdown in the news, and I had to re- go back to reading paper with, with, and I had to put my glasses on because I can read the prompter without glasses, but paper, oh no! <laughs> so I had a, a, a reading glasses episode of Nine News, and people seemed to love it and be amused by it, and. And uh, somebody very clever at Specsavers sent me a little note saying, "Look, um, come in and try some out." So I went in and uh, and end up ended up buying some glasses as well as they gave me some free ones. But I also bought some glasses, um, some reading glasses, and uh, I it. thought I'll put a pic of that up on. So I did put it up, and it's amazing. A lot of people seem to like that, so it didn't do any harm. But I actually wasn't selling. The audience, anything. I was just sharing. Well, this is what happened. <clears throat> so it's social influencer marketing, and whether you're into it or not, I mean, you have a large mm. following, and brands are paying for that now. My last guest was talking about embarking on a social influencer strategy, where you go and knock on the door of of social influencers, bloggers, social media experts, or whatever they mm. are, podcasters, dare I say, mm. uh, and say, hey, listen, would you mind talking about in your own, mm. you know, real, authentically about this brand and we'll mm. pay you for it. So that that's how you monetize it. Yes, well, I don't think like, it's a, it's I don't think it's a hitch thing. No, well, not really because uh, <laughs> the thing about news is that um, you be impartial. Correct. So I, I, Correct. Nobody would know what side of politics I vote for or whether I vote at all because I don't I never talk about that on air. We don't yep. take we don't have an editorial approach. You're on air in 6 minutes. All right. Uh, no, how are we going? Are we okay? We're so doing, far we're so doing good. Great. Give me a bump. <laughs> Give me thank a bump. you. <laughs> For that, Thank you. Uh, uh, I want to talk about your podcast. My yeah. last question around social media is: How do you handle the trolls? There aren't many. I haven't had trouble with. I've had very little trouble. You occasionally get something, oh, you know, something nasty or off or whatever, and I think, oh well, never mind, and I just 
dismiss it. Good on you. Yeah. You have a podcast called Behind the Wheel. Yeah, so I'm, I'm one of the, the people on it. It's, yes. It's, uh, it's to do with a website, and it's uh, a friend of mine, or friends of mine, run the website, and uh, Chris Miller is one of the people who is involved with Behind the Wheel, and I've known him for years. He knew that I liked cars, and, and he said, oh, come on, be a, host, be a, one, a guest host. And so I did that and discovered that it's actually quite good fun. And, uh, and it's a great way of, again, of just touching base with people in a different way, making connections. Uh, a lot of people love cars. I love cars, but I also like public transport. And I'm a, you know, I'm a big believer in that. So I just found What's your very favourite car? My favourite <clears throat> car. Oh, I've just driven the Lexus I, LC500. I saw that photo on Instagram. Oh, that oh my car goodness. It's amazing. It, and it was, it's kind of a, the, the one I drove for the week for the review was mustard yellow. And uh, when I saw the colour, I thought, oh, out there, isn't it? <laughs> And then by the end of the week, I thought, oh, I would happily keep this car. However, I might say since then, I've just spent a week with the Golf, the new, uh, the latest model, Golf, uh, and it's the entry-level model, which is in the 20s. Yep. Uh, well, manual. Yep. Oh, this is such right. a good car. So, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive. You, you, when we were speaking the other night, you were talking about maybe starting another podcast with whether Lady Lavinia, yes. sports reporter Tony Jones. Yes, yeah, something like that. Why? It's a possibility. Because we've got stories to tell. <laughs> and if we we could, want to be heard. If we could bore the hell out of somebody, why not? <laughs> is that a nine initiative or is that nah, something that the no, three of you have gone, you know what? We have, we, we're good friends. We get on really well. Um, and we thought, oh, why not? So we'll see. It, you've it you've only been doing yet. social media for three hours a day, so you've got another <laughs> I've got so much 20, time 21. Spare. Tell me, uh, before we finish, there is a yeah. lot of my uh, listeners uh, who do videos, who are uh, yes. embarking on getting their phone out, yep. do, you know, thinking about Facebook Live, thinking about doing YouTube. Mm. Um, with video, putting yourself on camera comes nerves. Yep. How do you uh, – what, what's a tip for handling nerves? Share yourself. Share yourself with the audience. Throw yourself at their mercy because – when you're authentic, it's just be authentic, be yourself, and um, no matter. I mean, I make about oh, two or three hundred thousand mistakes a day on camera and on videos and on you know stuff, but people don't seem to mind because we're all human. We're all human. Yeah. I, I love that coughing fit. Oh uh, yes, of, of yes. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> Lavinia <laughs> ended up reading Lavinia, the, reading the news. Lavinia, who just happened to be there, thank goodness, took over, and she didn't miss a beat because, of course, Lavinia's very experienced broadcaster in many areas. She does our weather in Melbourne and and national weather too on various shows. But uh, but Lavinia can read the news or do whatever she chooses so, to. So just to, just to finish on that, then Pete, mm. is you're saying that being yourself removes all pressure. Uh, you don't yes. have to try and be something you're not. Oh, yes. You aren't thinking ahead as to how am I pre presenting it. No, it's, it's, just be yourself. This is me. Yes, that's right. Because because the thing, as we were saying, the audience is highly intelligent and if, if you're being phony, they know. Mm. Uh, you don't have to talk about stuff you don't want to. Just, you know, just say, oh, look, I'm, you know, don't mm. want to go into that here, you know, or whatever. Good. But, but just, you know, be yourself and cheer yourself. Good on you. Well, thank you for making thank time <laughs> to be on the Small Business Big Marketing Show and taking us behind the scenes of I'm your social media very activity. Honoured. And if I can hold this up for Absolutely. The, uh, that for is the... possibly one of the great books of, I, I don't know, of the last day or so. Uh, uh, of the last <laughs> 200 years, this is one of the great books. And it's got this marvellous author. His name is Tim Reed. Give it a go. <laughs> Check it out. Love it. Peter Hitchener, thank you. Thank you, Tim. There you go, team. Channel 9 newsreader extraordinaire, Peter Hitchener. <laughs> Love that interview. In case you're wondering what he was doing at the end there, he was holding up a copy of my book and giving it a plug. What an absolute gentleman. You'll find a link to all Peter's social media handles over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 378, along with the Facebook live video of that interview, which we did. Coming up, I share my top three attention grabbers from that fireside chat with Hitch. Yeah, I get to call him Hitch now. It's pretty cool. Plus, I've got another low-cost marketing idea for you. But first, I think it's time for a little mind expansion. The Small Business Big Marketing Show is made possible thanks to Open Universities Australia. As business owners, we're more likely to work in our business than on it. Who's guilty of that? Come on, hands up, hands up. I certainly am. 
We get so caught up in the busyness of business, but it doesn't have to be that way. You see, you can study a postgraduate single unit online through Open Universities Australia. You could sharpen your accounting skills, deep dive into economics. You you could even improve your marketing if you can't find a decent podcast on the topic. And trust me, I've tried. (laughs) Seriously, though, having interviewed hundreds of successful business owners, one thing many have in common is they never, ever stop learning. So be one of them and sharpen your skills by checking out the single modules on offer at Open Universities Australia over at www.open.edu.au. All right, my top three attention grabbers from my chat with Channel 9's Peter Hitchener, thanks to Open Universities Australia and 52ways.biz. Attention grabber number one. No matter how successful you are, stay humble. You know, being Australia's number one newsreader, Peter is at the absolute top of his game. Yet he remains so humble, grateful and ridiculously accessible. I think it's so ugly when I meet a successful person and they exude arrogance. You agree? Hope you're not one of them. I'm pretty sure you're not being a listener of this show. Attention grabber number two. Peter hasn't put a huge amount of thought into how he strategically uses each social media channel. I loved how he responded to my question about which video streaming service, Periscope or Facebook Live, he would have used if he'd streamed this interview. And he responded, both. I think too many business owners over-engineer their social media approach and as a result, do nothing. Do something. See what works for you and your audience, and take it from there. I'll include a link in the show notes for this episode to a blog post I wrote about how to use social media to take people behind the scenes of your business, which will give you a good running start. And attention grabber number three from my chat with Hitch. If you look through Pete's posts across all the channels he uses, he can often be seen promoting other people and their businesses. This can only endear him to others and get him a whole lot more shares and social media loving from those people he chooses to profile. Well, that's what grabbed my attention. I'd love to know what grabbed yours. As usual, smoke signal, carrier pigeon, snail mail, P.O. Box 989 Mount Eliza. 3930, or just head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 378 and leave a comment. What have you got to lose? It's time for one simple yet effective marketing idea that you can implement immediately. One that's not going to cost a fortune, that might just generate you more awareness, more inquiry, and ultimately more sales. I call today's idea the exit interview. Seeing a customer leave is never, ever a fun experience, right? When unhappy customers leave, you have to be able to put aside any personal feelings you might have and recognize the situation as an opportunity to learn and to grow. If you want to improve your customer experience and retention over time, then make a habit of conducting exit interviews with customers who have made the decision to walk away. Here's my three steps to nailing your exit interview. Step one, think about what kind of questions you want to ask your customers before they go. This is no time to hold back, team. Find the courage to ask the questions that may result in negative feedback like, what was it like doing business with us? What were we particularly bad at? What could we do so much better? Your goal is to figure out why your customer is leaving, what went wrong, and how you can make improvements going forward. Step two, if you can't perform your exit interviews in person, use a tool like Qualaroo or Google Forms to create your exit survey. And step three, when a customer makes it known that they no longer wish to do business with you, Ask them if they'd be willing to provide feedback by filling out your exit interview form. Review feedback and determine if there are any improvements that can be made within your business. And here's the pro tip. 
If the customer gets angry or overly negative, don't take it personally. Don't get in an argument with them. Don't try and provide your side of the story. Just smile and thank them. Once you've got your cool back, then figure out what improvements you can make to avoid losing another customer under the same circumstances. That's my three steps to nailing your exit interviews. Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 378 where you'll find a link to this post plus some additional resources to bring this idea to life including links to the resources I mentioned above. So what have you got to lose? Well that almost wraps up another episode of the Small Business Big Marketing Show but there's plenty of marketing gold and I mean plenty of marketing gold coming your way in the weeks ahead. You and I are going to catch up with the world's leading SEO expert, Rand Fishkin, and it is an unbelievable interview, let me tell you, as well as a fellow who's launched an insanely futuristic business that involves your DNA. Well, it could potentially involve your DNA. Hey, have you listened to my chat with Steve Sims? He's a concierge to Hollywood A-listers, priding himself on the fact that he and his team can get you, or can get them, I should say, anything they want. He's also a referral marketing expert. I have a philosophy that it's it's far, 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 far cheaper, and everyone's heard this, it's far cheaper to keep a client than to get a new one. And if you can impress your client, then you can ask him for two more clients. Okay, so the referral route is the cheapest, most lucrative, and the greatest return on investment you can get. So you've got to really mollycoddle that client. And Steve goes on to share exactly how he does that. You'll find that full interview plus hundreds more over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com or you can subscribe free on iTunes. Hey, I'd love to hear from you. Email me, tim at timreid, reid.com.au. You can hit me up on Twitter at Timbo Reid. And I would encourage you to join the Small Business Big Marketing Facebook page where I share the lighter side of marketing. Don't forget to sharpen your sword by enrolling in one of the single module online courses offered by Open Universities Australia. You can check them out at open.edu.au. And be sure to grab your free seat at Dale Beaumont's 52 Ways Live Events. New dates have been released for 2018. So you've got no excuses, really, have you? Head over to 52ways.biz. If you love the Small Business Big Marketing Show, and why wouldn't you? Seriously, why wouldn't you? Then let another business owner know about it. Grab their phone, open up the podcast app, search for the Small Business Big Marketing Show, subscribe, hit play, love your work. Until next week, I'm Timbo Reid. Thanks for tuning in. May your marketing be the best marketing Bye for now.